Hey, I'm Jared Burgos, the program director for the digital photography program here at First Institute. I'm Josh Graham. I'm an instructor here in the photography program. And my name's Ian Carroll, and I'm the director of new program development. There is a need for photographers. It's a fantastically open field for freelancers. Uh, there are jobs out there for at many different companies for digital photography. Mm. Uh, there's a definite need in the marketplace, but I think the main reason that we really went towards a photography curriculum is because it was such a nice fit with the school. Definitely. Mm. It, uh, it's something that we've seen interest from our students already. Mm -hmm. um, I know the graphic design program touches on it. Film and video obviously touches on it. Um, the audio program maybe is the furthest away from photography, but they still use some cameras. They still use some cameras. <laughs> they still use some cameras. <laughs> sure. So I think that's where we initially were coming from is this, there's a need out there and this place is particularly suited mm -hmm. to fill that need. Josh, you may remember this from, from looking at the program in its early stage, but the idea was really how can we, how can we show, build a program that that the technology, teaching the technology of photography, um, it runs parallel to sort of the development of cameras, the development of the history of photography, uh, that one thing can teach the other thing. I mean, everything we do now, even though it's digital, is is rooted in, you know, film photography going all the way back to the really the 18th century when we first started playing around with this idea right. of capturing images with light. Um, sensors essentially work the same as film. It's the, I mean, the concept of depth of field and composition haven't really changed. For sure. We've just, it's, it's easier. There's less of a barrier for entry now, I guess, than there ever was before. Well, yeah, you don't have to build your own camera from scratch. You don't scratch have to build your own camera. Uh, build your own film and everything <laughs> yeah. else. I mean, you can. <laughs> right. I've done it, but yeah, yeah it's, it's not required anymore. For sure. Throughout the program, students are going to be able to get like a nice, big overview of like, the whole photography world, whether it's street photography, studio photography, landscape photography, you name it, we're going to try to cover everything. Um, so that way students can, you know, dabble in all the different types of photography and kind of choose their lane, pick where they want to go. But so they still at least have heard the terms and, and know, uh, you know, the options that are out there for jobs. Sure. I think you kind of hit on something that's important to me. Um, was that idea of them being able to choose their lane. I think sometimes in a, you know, in a school that's that's, you know, very job focused where we're trying to place people into careers, mm -hmm. right? Um, in that format sometimes you sort of expect students to come, they're training for a very specific thing and then you put them out and they maybe along the way they find out that they don't really love that particular yeah. piece or something, you know, mm -hmm. photography is huge. Yeah. Right. So what, what do you want to, what do you want to be? Do you want to try this? Do you want to try this? Let's, mm -hmm. let's put our hands on everything mm -hmm. yeah. and get a chance to sample and pick from the thing that's mm -hmm. absolutely going to like, you know, excite you, bring you yeah. joy. Right. Yeah. Good. I mean, there's so much out there that students aren't even aware of. Yeah. Like, for sure. I mean, abstract photography. I mean, how often do you actually hear about that? It's, you know, right. It's portraits, it's landscapes, it's architecture, but there's this whole other realm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So. And, and we actually, we have an entire class that's dedicated to exploring experimental photography, teaching photography and learning photography it's not about some inherent ability to see better than anyone else. Even the best gear it's not, or anything like yeah, that. Oh, it's yeah, it's not about yeah. even the best gear. But what I think it is about is being able to see and recognize patterns. That there are patterns that people find generally more sort of pleasurable, more aesthetically appealing. And there's an, another entire class in the program about uh, sort of aesthetics mm -hmm. and composition. Mm -hmm. But aesthetics is like an old school philosophy study, right? Um, and I think the idea here is maybe all that that really means is that those governing patterns, you learn to recognize them. Mm -hmm. We were looking at all those photos that were like out of focus or like had some super strong motion blur on it. And we we're just like, but they're still so good photos. Like they're such good photos. And it's because they still had the patterns that we're talking about. Like, regardless right. if, you know, something was out of focus, it was still like, 
a well composed photo or right. you could you could break certain rules once you actually establish what those rules are mm -hmm. once you know them and if there's yeah. an overwhelming mm -hmm. uh, amount of rules that are being followed yeah. it works yeah. yeah there's an idea in design that's a kind of a movement right now of like what they call anti-design right and it's pretty popular but i always think it's funny because people look at it and they think oh that's somebody just ignoring everything and i'm like no to make anti-design work you have to really be like subtly doing the rules in the yeah. background. Mm -hmm. You make it look like they're broken on the surface in a superficial level. And that's kind of the photo the photographs we were looking at yesterday. Yeah. You know, something's out of focus and it still looks cool. It's or, kind of proof that you know the rules. Right. Mm -hmm. It's proof that you've mastered them exactly. when you can take them and bend them in that way. Yeah. I think people want to believe in the sort of uh, the artistic process or the creative process or or that they, that someone is just born artistic, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I think people want to believe that that's inherent. It, it somehow makes art more valuable to them. But to me, the fact that there's this incredible code to unlock mm -hmm. is actually more valuable. And yeah. if you're one of the people that knows the code, that's really cool, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I feel like in the type of stuff we do, whether it's music, film, graphic design, photography, um, people on the outside, when you do something, they'll be like, Oh my God, how'd you do that? That's so cool. And then to like us, it might be like, well, that was so simple and it just blew their mind. But just knowing those little things that might blow other people's mind, knowing those simple things can like really make that. That's kind of in a way makes you the creative or, or makes you the, the person in the room to go to, like learning these small little things. And you, you have your little toolbox that you that you uh, fill up, fill up with all the tools that you learn at a, at a place like first. Um, and you're right. Yeah. It, it, it does make you the creative because you said it, it's it's not less creative yeah. because there is a structure or that there are rules or that there are, there are patterns there. Mm -hmm. it, it's actually sort of more creative that that you have the ability to take these things and combine yeah. them now however you want. Mm -hmm. right. Creativity is not about um, sort of just ungovernable freedom. Creativity is about being able to combine things in really interesting ways, creating structures. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, that I love with that, when we're talking about photography, you know, these rules go back forever. forever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of human historical record <laughs> yeah. sort of rules, right? Um, there's, a, there's a reason that the color red makes us feel a certain way, that it re can represent things like love and violence at the same time mm -hmm. as a photographer knowing that you suddenly have this incredible power this tool that you can wield in mm -hmm. a way that that someone who doesn't realize that connection yeah can't wield it yeah uh, i feel like having the ability to evoke emotion just through a photo is kind of like that's the goal like not having the coolest camera, not having, you know, or living in the coolest place that has the coolest buildings or coolest landscapes to, to go shoot. It's like, make somebody look at something and make them feel something about it. That's like, that's like the goal. So I guess the other question I pose is, you know, how do we, how do those things rectify when we talk about like sort of being an artist, being creative, but the fact that we have to go out there after this program, you know, our students, they're doing this because they want jobs yeah and how do we how do we sort of you know make sure that that yeah they're getting to to sort of create these these interesting things that excite them and that tell a story and that evoke emotion mm -hmm. but they're also employable mm -hmm. right? it's important right i mean can <laughs> I so. can can it, it feels like there's a sort of myth of an artist that's unemployable yeah in any other way the starving mm -hmm. artist, right yeah it's the starving artist myth yeah. for sure so so how do we rectify that I think you can you can channel both. Uh, like for me, I like taking portraits. That's, mm -hmm. that's my favorite thing to do. I like to show somebody a, a photo of them, and they'd be like, "Wow, I look great!" Or like they they get something out of that. So I can get into like wedding photography, mm -hmm. where literally I'm going to document somebody's most memorable day of of their life, maybe, yeah. and and me get paid for it, and them. <laughs> you know, get that same thing that I'm looking for, like that right. emotion out of them. So I, I think there's like, 
you know, whatever route you take, I think there are jobs out there where you can kind of bridge that gap. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think I know, you know, I, I like portraits and, and mm-hmm. anytime you're, you're taking a picture of a person, mm-hmm. I think there's a, a connection there. If you really enjoy taking pictures of people, yeah. um, the jobs kind of come with that one mm-hmm. because that's what people want yeah. is to feel a connection to themselves in the photograph. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if your interest is architecture, which I have, I love architecture. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's jobs for, for architectural photography. There's jobs for shooting architecture for, from magazines, real, to estate. real estate, real estate to, to anything. But if you're engaged with spaces, mm-hmm. you know, and lines and sort of the, the composition of, of spaces and how humans interact with them, you know, if that's what interests you, mm-hmm then you're going to engage with that type of photography. And if you're engaged with that type of photography in that way, in that thoughtful way, you're going to be better at doing those jobs. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think the key is just letting students know that those jobs exist. And so when they have an interest in, in one of these fields, you know, letting them know, Oh no, there's a way to survive on that. Mm -hmm. You know, go out and do this. Now, granted, it may take steps. You know, we've all done jobs that were sort of stepping stone jobs. For sure. Uh, I think we have to always be a sort of realistic. You know, I don't get to, you know, uh, I also love filmmaking. I don't get to just go out and make the movie that I want to make first time out. No. You know, um, I don't have the the capital to make that happen. And so... So I have to sort of earn my way to it, right? And uh, I actually think that's an important part of the process mm-hmm. because at first, when, we, when your students come in, and we've all taught here, so uh, when your students first come in, they have tons of ideas and they're not ready to execute them. Mm-hmm. No. And part of our goal is I want to teach you how to execute those ideas. Yeah. But I hope that when they leave, their ideas have gotten even even bigger. Part of part of this learning process is also continuing to learn as you work, yeah. continuing to do all the time for the rest of your life. For yeah. the rest of your <laughs> life, right? In any of these industries, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, you, you guys probably. I'm preaching to the choir here, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to students, you know, it's always your best students are always the ones that you know are going to want to learn something forever. Mm-hmm. Right? I always have a question. Thank you guys for sitting down today and talking about the photography program. Of course. This was an awesome conversation. It was so much fun to do. Yeah. I'm Mm -hmm. excited. If you'd like to learn more about the photography program here at First Institute, please go to first.edu and check it out.